So um, we're going to, for the next 90 minutes, um, we are very lucky to have some great speakers here who will be uh, focusing on, on three different examples to showcase the added value between integrating child protection and education programming. Uh, these efforts fit really squarely within objective three of the Alliance's 2021 to 2025 strategy. It's called A Calarian Call, the Centrality of Children and Their Protection Within Humanitarian Action. Um, and that objective three is about multi-sector and integrated programming and collaboration. And we know that we can't achieve children's protection uh, in humanitarian crises through just one sector. And we also know that children do not experience life through silos. As such, you know, to ensure that children are, are fully protected, we must be doing this work across sectors. And so the Alliance seeks to ensure that children's protection and well-being are prioritised within this cross-sector collaboration. And today, uh, this incredible lineup of experts is going to speak about um, a number of different integrated interventions um, that they have been involved in, the impacts of these and lessons learned. So on the screen there, you can see um, a list of our from the National Foundation for Development and Humanitarian Response uh, in Yemen. Uh, Sundas Badwi is the Education Supervisor for the Abjad Initiative um, based in Syria. Uh, Sara is from the International Rescue Committee um, and Kunja um, is our Child Protection Coordinator for IRC and Paul is also from IRC, the Senior Integrated Education and Child Protection Manager. So um, we'll uh, get to our speakers in a moment. Um, they're going to have presentations on each of their contexts and uh, the examples of integration. Then we're going to open up to have a bit of a panel discussion to delve into the findings a little bit more and finish with an opportunity to take a few questions for the different panelists. Um, but firstly, before we dive into that, we've got three very short videos from each of the different organisations to give you a bit more of a snapshot about who they are um, and what they do. سندس بدوي من مبادرة أبجد للتعليم أنا معكم لنتعرف أكثر اليوم على فريق أبجد تفضلوا معي عم نتشارك مجموعة صور 
الأطفال أبجد هدول الأطفال مو برحلة تخييم ولا مشاركين بمجموعة ألعاب هدول الأطفال عم يتم تقديم التعليم لهم بطريقة إبداعية ومميزة في حدا عنده فكرة بأي مكان من العالم عم يتم, عم يتم تقديم التعليم لهدول الأطفال في سوريا وتحديدا في الشمال السوري مين نحن في مبادرة أبجد للتعليم؟ مجموعة من الشباب والشابات من مختلف الاختصاصات وموزعين بكل أنحاء العالم بدأت الفكرة لما نحن كشباب سوري فكرنا كيف ممكن نتساعد مع بعض ونقوي بعض ونعمل فرق ونترك أثر بهذا المجتمع الأزمة السورية خلقت مجتمع متفكك رغم أنه في كل الخبرات العلمية والمهنية لكن ما قادر أنه يستفيد منها لذلك اجتمعنا على اختلاف أماكن تواجدنا خططنا مع بعض اشتغلنا مع بعض من 2018 حتى اليوم تقدرنا نوصل لهذا النموذج من العمل الجماعي خلال هاي الفترة كلها كل حدا مننا اشتغل على تمكين مهارات الفريق اشتغلنا على انه نكتسب مهارات جديدة نتعلم ونعلم الكرامة كانت من الاساسيات اللي حاولنا نحافظ عليها سواء كرامة المستفيد او اللي عم بيقدم الخدمة في مرات نجحنا وحققنا الهدف وفي مرات ما حالفنا الحظ وما قدرنا نحقق النجاح اللي نحن بنتمناه لكن نحن سجلنا هاي الأخطاء لنتعلم منها ولساتنا مكملين مكملين لنوصل لرؤيتنا بمجتمع متنوع متضامن يتعلم ويتطور اخترنا التعليم لأنه التعليم حاجة أكيد في هاي الأزمة السورية ولأنه التعليم هو الأداة اللي ممكن تساعدنا نعمل تغيير بالمجتمع مع الأسف الأزمة السورية تركت كتير أطفال خارج التعليم وفق تقرير لليونيسف في يعني عنا 2 مليون طفل سوري خارج التعليم عشرات الآلاف منهم موجودين في مخيمات الشمال السوري 1300 مخيم في الشمال السوري 175 مخيم فقط بتوفر فيه مدارس 1127 مخيم لا يضم مدارس ليش نحن اليوم بهذا المؤتمر؟ نحن معكم اليوم لنتشارك بتجربتنا عملنا نظام مؤشرات تعليمي بتتابع الطفل بشكل يومي وأسبوعي وشهري هاي المؤشرات ساعدتنا بشكل كتير كبير أنه نوقف حالات الأطفال هدول الأطفال قد يكونوا عم يتعرضوا لإساءة عمالي أو إهمال في حالات قدرنا نحن بخبراتنا أنه نتدخل ونساعدها في حالات تمت إحالتها لأطراف شريكي تعمل في مجال الحماية لكن لسه في كتير حالات أطفال عم تنتظر جهة تتمكن أنها تتدخل وتأمن لها الحماية شكرا لكم ولا استماعكم. Hello, my name is Sarah Mabger and I'm the Child Protection Technical Advisor for the International Rescue Committee, which is a humanitarian organization founded in 1933 to respond to humanitarian crisis around the world. IRC has numerous sectors like many other organizations in the aid sector, but we found increasingly that the need to integrate between child protection and education while preserving our specialty in each sector is becoming even more critical than it has been in the past. And we're recognizing that in order for children to be safe when they access education in displacement contexts, in conflict or in natural disasters, they absolutely need to have the support of child protection actors as well to integrate into education. And so IRC is really trying hard now to invest in these two sectors and to find opportunities where we can not only design projects together, but also implement them together and really have joint education child protection models to respond to children who are out of school, but also children who are in formal school. We also recognize that uh, the different services that we have uh, can be used for different cohorts of children. So for example, IRC has invested a lot in research and social and emotional learning. And we know that we can use these learnings both uh, for children who are out of school and to try and integrate them into formal education or at least into basic literacy initially with the support of child protection actors, but then also support children in formal school with social and emotional uh, skills. So we really recognize that in different areas, we can really work together. And we've, uh, we see this from early warning systems in school and non-formal learning settings. And we also see it in terms of staff skill set and competencies, you know, the importance of education staff having strong protection skills. Uh, but in order to do this, we really need the support of donors and 
key agencies so that we're actually able to appropriately resource projects like this, which can be complex. And in order to reach out of school children, we need especially big investment and long term investment, given the complexity of the needs of children who have been out of school for a long time. So moving forward for this specific presentation, you'll be hearing from one of IRC's flagship programs called the Priest Project, which is implemented in Niger, Cameroon and Nigeria, and it's funded by ECHO. And this is really seen as a pilot project to integrate education and child protection. My colleague uh, Kunja Mayubila will be presenting on the learnings from the extreme north in Cameroon, and he's the education and child protection coordinator. And my colleague Paul Bagambe will be presenting from Nigeria, from Maiduguri, on the implementation of the Peace Project and the lessons learned from there. And he's the senior program manager for education and child protection. So we really look forward to uh, being in the session with you, but also advocating even more for resources to be given to agencies to really truly integrate in a meaningful way so that we can make sure children are safely accessing education and are also receiving appropriate protection services to decrease the level of risk that they're exposed to. Thank you. Great, thanks very much for that. I think um, really exciting to see the work these organizations are doing. Um, so before we, we go into individual presentations, just wanted to do a little bit of poll, uh, a poll for our audience participation. So that should hopefully be popping up on your screen. Um, and if you can tell us how familiar are you with child protection and inter education integrated programming? five being an expert, one being new to the topic. And this will give us a bit of an idea about um, uh, the knowledge and expertise that we've got in the audience today. Give it a second before the results come up. I don't know how quickly people are clicking on things. <laughs> Do we have the results in? Oh, there we go. Okay, we've got a really good spread today, which is fantastic. A couple of people new to the topic, a couple of experts, and then a bunch of us sitting in the middle. Um, so hopefully everyone will be getting something out of the, the session today. Um, but please, as we go through, if you've got questions, do put them in the chat um, and we'll see how much time we've, we've got at the end to answer some of these as we go through. So, uh, without any further delay, I'd like to introduce Alam Ahmed, uh, the Education Program Manager for the National Foundation for Development and Humanitarian Response, who's going to talk a little bit more about um, their intervention in Yemen. Alam, can you hear us? Hello, Amanda. Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Uh, I think I have a problem with video, maybe because of the internet. I'm trying to... Uh, uh, open the camera. The camera is opened, but the uh, site is black. I don't know why. That is uh, no. Things are okay. Yeah, <laughs> that is no yeah. problem at all. We, we can hear you very well, so please do start, and maybe we we'll see your face hopefully. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, as you know, I'm Ahlam, an expert on education in emergencies and integration of child protection into education activities. Uh, representing the, the education cluster in Yemen, um, I'm sharing with you uh, our experience at NFDHR in integrating child protection activities with education in emergencies projects. Uh, based on um, our belief in child protection and the education program, we have been keen to integrate child protection activities into uh, the education projects that we implement. And here is one of our projects funded by ECHO in uh, part uh, partnership with uh, UNICEF and uh, the NRC. Um, can you move to the second slide, please, Amanda? Uh, session objectives. Uh, the first objective of this uh, session is to highlight the importance of EIE CP integrated interventions in Yemen and the other countries with similar context profile. Uh, sharing the challenge with uh, we face during the design and implementation of the projects, uh, lesson learned, and the transfer 
of experience to workers in the field in countries with similar condition. Um, uh, this project is uh, designed to provide uh, continued access to quality education in, and child protection services for 14,000 and 1,708 10 teachers and social workers with non-formal edu uh, educational activities integrated with the child protection activities like safe school protocols, case management, PSS, and raising awareness uh, of uh, 20,000 community members about the importance of education and child protection. The project is being implemented in the areas most affected by world displacement and armed conflicts in Yemen. Uh, can you move to, to the second slide, please, Amanda? A project named Access to Education for Displaced and Host Community Children in Ma'rib Governorate. Uh, this project uh, is designed specifically for the displaced uh, children and uh, targeted Ma'rib Governorate. Ma'rib Governorate, uh, the governorate that hosts the huge number of displaced children from around Yemen. Uh, the project uh, provision of non-formal education opportunities leading to IDBs and host communities, children learning in safe and protective environment and supporting them in their future successful transition back to the formal education system, including their national level certification as recognition for learning accountability. Uh, this is a project designed to for a one year uh, donor is uh, ECO via UNICEF. Uh, it uh, targeted 14,000 children who are out of school for uh, one year or less, where they are targeted by catch up classrooms and the, the students who are out of school for more than two th or three years with ALP classrooms. Uh, the interventions that are uh, being implemented in this project, the first one said school protocols contribute to the project education from attack by ruling out communities or commitment for, from the safe school declaration and the applicants, uh, application for, uh, of safe school protocols through training. 800 school community members, uh, 400 teachers and 14 students on the school uh, uh, protocols, safe school protocols. Alternative, uh, the second activity or the center is the second intervention that is in this uh, project is alternative learning pathways, increase access to alternative learning pathways for 14 uh, conflict, uh, for 14,000 uh, conflict affected and or displaced children through establishment of temporary learning spaces, including wash facilities and identification as a part of existing learning spaces. The temporary learning spaces will also be provided with wash facilities and essential cleaning hygiene materials to keep good, a healthy and safe environment, protecting children against illnesses uh, associated with poor hygiene and uh, sanitation in schools, such as cholera and COVID-19. Uh, Community-based classrooms uh, also increase secure and safe learning environment for conflict affected and displaced school-aged children through the establishment of uh, 210 temporary learning spaces with integrated child protection services based on the results of the needs assessment in addition Additional existing learning 
spaces will be identified in schools or other buildings fit for the purpose. Performance-based teacher incentive also uh, to support uh, 810 teachers in collaboration with UNICEF, including additional temporary teachers uh, through provision of monthly performance-based allowance in selected districts to ensure teachers can be present and teaching. School teaching, learning, recreational materials will be provided to uh, community sensitization, sensitize to thousand community member on the importance of education and decay life saving and life sustaining message, including those linked to hygiene, health, nutrition, and child protection, availability of services, and psychosocial support training community members will create a community-based support system for children accessing safe education opportunities. Regarding to child protection, we will uh, we are supporting uh, the education program that established in the targeted government rate with psychosocial support and minor risk education. Uh, we provide an integrated package of child protection services, including psychosocial support and minor risk education in learning spaces and schools, establishment of safe referral pathways and case management of the most vulnerable children for referral to medical and other protective services identified in, uh, in and out of learning spaces based on endorsed identification and referral standards operating procedures. Uh, also, integration into formal learning system. The whole uh, goal or objective of this program is to support integration of children into the formal education system, linking temporary education services to the formal system, ensuring sustainability through supporting referral to and registration in existing formal education and supporting children's uh, psychosocial support and child protection needs. School referrals support increased uh, observa observation capacity of existing formal uh, school in locations with increased population, population movement guidelines for harmonized approach to pathways and referral will be revised and included in the training package. In this project also, we focused on a capacity development for the teachers. For 1,513, staff members working on all education and CB activities, including social workers, mentors, administrative staff, and PSS facilitators, will uh, are provided with uh, professional development support. Uh, they uh, got supporting and capacity building and uh, active learning, classroom management, essential teaching methods, and techniques to provide non-formal learning opportunities to IDPs and host community children. They uh, got a capacity building package on child protection uh, activities and programs, such as safe school protocol and child protection, psychosocial support, case management, and referral pathways mind risk education, life skills, uh, communication, leadership, planning, and self-confidence. Parents right. 
So, sorry, sorry Alan, I'm just gonna it's just gonna come in there. I don't mean to cut you off, but um, we um, have a little bit more time in the panel to be able to go into the the objectives and challenges um, and lessons and in, in the way forward. Are you okay if I um, hand over to, to Sundas for um, a bit of a spotlight on their intervention and we can come back to you in the panel? Uh, yes, 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 sure, sure, Amanda. Perfect. Thanks very much, Alan. Um, I think great to hear about what a complex uh, project it was with um, so many multi-sector interventions for this. Um, I'm very happy now to be welcoming uh, Sundas um, from the uh, Abjad Initiative. Um, Sundas Badwi is an education supervisor. Sundas, the floor is yours. Uh, تعرفت على الفريق من خلال الفيديو والفكرة الأساسية لأبجد أبجد أبجد مبادرة للتعليم بتطبق التعليم بال بالمخيمة من خلال عدة برامج عنا برنامج أقرأ برنامج إدراك وبرنامج الياسمين اللي هو منصة تعليمية إلكترونية بتحاول تعلم اللغة العربية للأطفال من خلال هاي البرامج نحن عم نحاول نعمل تدخل الأطفال اللي خارج قطاع التعليم. Please can you give me the next slide please the next one. أنا هون اليوم لحد تشارككم بجزء من تجربتنا اللي طبقناها في برنامج اقرأ بالمخيمات التعليمية نحن كفريق تعليمي شبابي طبعا مبدئيا نحن ما بنعتمد على اي تمثيل اي منظمات نحن فريق شبابي عم بيحاول يقدم التعليم للاطفال بهي الطريقه وحده من التجارب اللي طبقناها ببرنامج اقرا بالمخيمات هي المؤشرات التعليميه المؤشرات التعليميه هي الادوات اللي نحن بنستخدمها لنتابع العمليه التعليميه المتعلقه بالطالب الهدف من هاي الادوات انه تلصق اي تغيير بيصير عند الطالب سواء كان تحسن او تراجع في مستوى الطالب لنقدر نوصف حاله التعليمي ونعمل تدخل مناسب من ابجد سواء كان تدخل مباشر او غير مباشر يا نيكست سلايد بليز هاي المؤشرات التعليميه هي مؤشرات مؤشر الالتزام ومؤشر السلوك ومؤشر الدقيقة الواحدة مؤشر الالتزام بيرسب التزام الطلاب بالدوام وهو يتابع بشكل يومي من قبل معلم الصف مؤشر السلوك بيرسب سلوك الطالب أثناء تواجده بالمدرسة وهو يتابع بشكل أسبوعي خلال معايير مرتبطة بالنظافة الشخصية، النظافة العامة، التعاون مع الزملاء، التعاون مع المعلمين، الحفاظ على أساس المدرسة مؤشر اختبار الدقيقة الواحدة هو المؤشر اللي بيرصد المهارات التعليمية اللي بتمثل الطفل من اكتسابها وتحصيلها خلال اسبوع واحد. طبعا بتتضمن المواد اللي نحن بنستخدمها اللي هي اللغة العربية، اللغة الانجليزية، العلوم والرياضة. هي المؤشرات بتابعها معلم الدعم اللي هو مسؤول عن اصابات التغييرات اللي على المؤشرات الثلاثة. لحتى يقدر يحدد من خلال هي التغييرات نوع تدخل رح يعملوا يا نيكست سلايد بليز سجلنا نحن بشهر أربعة في برنامج اقرا تراجع بالتزام الطلاب في الصف الرابع في الصف الرابع في برنامج اقرا ومعلم الدعم قام بزيارات لكن الطلاب اللي حققوا اقل من 70% التزام ومن خلال هي الزيارات وهذا الاستقصاء وجدنا انه 65% من هذول الاطفال غير الملتزمين عندهم حالات عماله 35% من هذول الاطفال عندهم حالات اهمال اسري، رح شارككم هلا بامثله من حالات نحن قدرنا انه نوصفها ونرصدها من بمساعده هي المؤشرات، من هاي الحالات هي حاله الطفل غين اللي هو طفل آه تمام عنده 10 سنوات من الصف الرابع في مخيم الايمان، هذا الطفل سجل تراجع كثير بالتزامه لذلك قام معلم الدعم بعده زيارات لاهل هذا الطالب ومن خلال هي الزيارات Maybe go to the next slide. I think there is a problem in Sundas uh, internet. I think so. Apologies, we seem to have lost Sundas's connection. Maybe while we try to get her back, we could jump to um, our next speaker. Would that work? Won't I can uh, continue? Or would you like to continue? That would be great Maybe. if you're able to Maybe. step in and continue. Yeah, but can you uh, move to the next slide? 
Sure, next slide, yeah. perfect. And I will uh, uh, continue in Arabic. Okay. يعطيكم uh, العافية. Uh, شكرا جزيلا لدعوتنا للمؤتمر. Uh, انا سحار متطوع مع مبادره ابجاد uh, سندوس كانت عم تحكي عن قبل uh, ال... ما يقطع الانترنت كانت عم تحكي لنا uh, عن uh, uh, احد الطلاب uh, اللي uh, واجهنا معه او خلال uh, دوامه معنا بالمدرسه uh, كان عنده مشكله عماله هو ما عم يكون ملتزم فنحن على احد المؤشرات التعليميه اللي هو مؤشر الالتزام uh, قدرنا uh, 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 نلاحظ انه هذا الطفل هو غير ملتزم معنا نتيجه يعني بعد ما معلم الدعم شاف عدم التزامه فهو قام بزياره للاهل حتى يتعرف يعرف ليش هذا الطفل ما عم يلتزم معنا فعرف انه هذا الطفل هو عم عم يواجه مشكله عماله انه هو عم بيشتغل مضطر نتيجه الظروف المعيشيه ضمن المخيم فهو عم يضطر انه يشتغل فبالتالي هو ما عم بيكون قادر على انه يداوم معنا بالمدرسه حاولنا نحن نتواصل مع الاهل نحكي بضروره واهميه التعليم نحكي انه حاله المخيم هي حاله مؤقته وهن حيطلعوا بعدين يروحوا لمكان مستقر فالتعليم هو حيكون مهم وجيد لهذا الطفل وبنفس الوقت نحن حاولنا نرجع نشد هذا الطفل ونرجعه لحتى يكون معنا ضمن المدرسة من خلال عدة أنشطة كانوا المدرسين عم يعملوها معلم الدعم عم يعملها بنفس الوقت كان في أنشطة تعليمية ترفيهية لحتى نحاول نرفع من مستوى التعليم لهذا الطفل وبالتالي نحن هذا الطفل قدر خلال تقريبا خمس شهور أنه هو يلتزم معنا وحقق بنسبه الالتزام كانت 80% وقدر انه هو يجتاز الصف الرابع ونجح الى الصف الخامس. نكست سلايد بليز اوكي كمان عندنا حاله ثانيه واللي هي احد الاطفال كمان ضمن ابجد الطفل ميم هو عمره 10 سنوات هو طفل كان عم بيظهر عليه بعض السلوكيات ال اللي شوي كانت غريبه كان في اما تخريب للممتلكات المدرسه او كان في سلوك عنيف وجدناه نحن خلال تعامله بالصف ومع اصدقائه معلم الدعم ومعلم الصف هن عملوا عملوا مثل تحليل هذا السلوك قدروا يفهموه قدروا تماما يحددوا شو عم بيصير معه اتجهوا باتجاه المنزل عند الاهل ف من خلال بعض المؤشرات اللي رصدوها من خلال زيارتهم للاهل عرفوا انه هذا الطفل عنده عم عم بيواجه عنف اسري ف نحن فورا كجهه تعليميه نحن ما فينا نكون عم نتدخل بشكل مباشر لحمايه هذا الطفل ولكن حاولنا نحن من خلال الانشطه الغير المختصه انه نكون عم نساعد هذا الطفل وبنفس الوقت نحن كنا عم نقدم بعض الانشطه والخدمات الغير مختصه وكنا عم نحاول نعمل تشبيك مع جهه مختصه لحمايه الاطفال حتى هي تكون عم تتولى الامر حتى هي تكون عم 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 تتواصل مع الاهل بشكل مباشر عم تتواصل مع الطفل بشكل مباشر حتى نعمل يعملوا له اي فحوصات ان كان نفسيه او جسديه نيكست سلايد اي ثينك سندوس ويز اس ناو سو سندوس يو كان كونتينيو شكرا سحر لانك كملتي من خلال الامثله والتجارب اللي خبرتنا عنهم هلا سحر نحن بنشوف قديش في ترابط بين عمليه التعليم وعمليه الحمايه قديش نحن من خلال هاي المؤشرات اللي هي بالاصل هدفها انه نحن نقدر نعرف هذا الطفل قديش عنده تغيير بحالته التعليمي قديش نحن قدرنا نوصف حاله حاله الطفل قديش نحن قدرنا نعمل كشف مبكر لهدول الحالات اللي ممكن يكونوا عم يتعرضوا لاساءه او عندهم حالات عمالي او اهمال قديش نحن قدرنا نوصف هاي الحالات ممكن نحن لانه كجهه غير مختصه بشكل مباشر بالحمايه قدرنا نحن نحولها لجهه مختصه تقدر انه تتدخل وتعمل حمايه لهدول الاطفال بالنتيجه اللي حبينا نحن ناكد عليه من خلال تجربتنا باستخدام هاي المؤشرات التعليميه قديش في ترابط بين الحمايه والتعليم وقديش مهم انه نحن نضل متعاونين ويكون في هذا التشبيك بين قطاعات الحمايه والتعليم شكرا كثير لكم
Thank you, Sundas and Saha as well for stepping in with our connection issues. I think really fascinating to hear about um, how well the, the systems can work together in that early detection and then that referral to the specialized services. So I'm looking forward to, to hearing more about that in the panel. Um, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. So uh, Kunja Mayubula is the Child Protection Coordinator for the International Rescue Committee. And he's going to give a very quick snapshot about uh, their program, Protective and Adaptive Education Approaches for Children in Emergencies. Over to you, Kunja. Hello, it's probably supposed to start and then I will... Uh... Ah, okay, very short, sure. sorry, um, my mistake. So first then we have Paul uh, McGambi, who is the Senior Integrated Education and Child Protection Manager for IRC. So Paul, please, my apologies, you first and then Kunja second. That's okay, thank you very much everyone, uh, good morning. Uh, so uh, this is a protective and adaptive education approaches for children in emergencies, uh, which is a, a multi-country, cross-country uh, project implemented in Nigeria, Northeast Nigeria, uh, Cameroon, and Niger, uh, the regions that are affected uh, by Boko Haram conflict. And uh, I would like to say that this is a pilot funded by ECHO, um, uh, and we are very grateful to ECHO uh, for their support, but also for their strong advocacy to integration of protection and education. Next slide, please. Uh, keep, uh, yeah, keep going. Yeah, so, um, so the project in Western Central Africa uh, is, uh, uh, is integrated education and child protection. Uh, is a, a three-year project which started in May 2020 and will end in June next year. Uh, as I said, it is across the three countries, but it is also a flexible and adaptive progr programming that allows to try new things, uh, allows us to try innovation, uh, keep going. Uh, and uh, as I said, again, it is in Cameroon, Niger, uh, Niger in Difa region, Cameroon in uh, Far North uh, region, while in Nigeria, Northeast, uh, three states of uh, Borno, Adamo, and Yobe. Next slide. And uh, the theory of change of the project, uh, keep going, next slide. So is that uh, school-aged girls and boys in the three countries most affected by the humanitarian crisis have access to educational opportunities and improve their academic and social emotional uh, skills in safe and functional schools and learning spaces. So the, pro, uh, the project has three main results and result one is on access, uh, uh, particularly having girls and boys enroll and attend, attend safe uh, education, formal and non-formal opportunities. The second result is focused on community support uh, where we are building on caregivers and community support to ensure girls and boys have uh, access to learning, but in a safe environment. And the last uh, but not least uh, uh, result is on teacher professional development, uh, where we are supporting teacher and facilitators uh, uh, quality instruction in reading, mathematics, and social emotional learning to the beneficiaries. Next slide, please. Yeah, so um, uh, as I mentioned again, under result one, which is focused on access to education, we have models that we, imp that we implement our education programming. The first one being actual response. And uh, uh, this is uh, IRC's uh, safe healing and learning spaces where children who cannot access any, any form of learning in their communities or in their dispersed camps then they can go for acute response for a couple of months before they are either resettled back to their communities or something else uh, can happen. The other model is uh, accelerated learning program, uh, which is children who are basically out of school aged between nine years to 14, who have not been in school for over a year or who, um, uh, who have never been to school at all. And uh, the other one is catch up, uh, mainly children at risk of dropout and support to former schools. Result two, as I mentioned, is focused on caregivers and community access. And we're supporting a number of interventions ranging from caregiver community members support, drop, uh, development of uh, school safety and early warning signs, child protection case management, parenting sessions, 
And um, under Resource 3, we are basically building capacity of teachers and facilitators and creating safe learning environments. Next slide. Uh, yeah, and uh, I have already talked about this, uh, these uh, uh, models. You may skip that slide and go to the next. Yeah, uh, so in terms of child protection, um, uh, uh, yes, I will try to finish in one minute. In terms of child protection intervention, uh, basically we have uh, psychosocial support for children in formal school and, and uh, uh, self-healing and learning uh, spaces but we also support community, uh, uh, community child protection structures like uh, community coalitions, uh, child safeguarding uh, structures, and then we do child protection case management at all levels, at the community level, at the school level, and we do this in collaboration with parents and community leaders. Uh, probably I should stop here and then uh, invite my colleague to come in. Thank you very much. Time wasn't really enough, sorry. <laughs> So right, we'll have a little bit more time in the panel for a few questions and to follow anything up. Thanks very much, Paul. Uh, Kunja, please. Yeah, uh, thank you, Amanda, and good morning, all. I think Paul, Paul has given us an overview of uh, the peace projects. I'm going to give some practical aspect on how we do to implement it in the field. So uh, next slide, please. So um, the expectation for the, uh, the implementation of the peace project is very high because as we know, uh, education team and child protection team, uh, they have different area of expertise. So we need, we need to build the capacity of both team and uh, uh, Child protection team members uh, should participate in uh, recommended education trainings and uh, CP staff regularly participate in training by education peers in social emotional learning. They should also understand the education model cho chosen in peace and CP staff know education models, better referrals and support. In the other hand, uh, education team members should participate actively in recommended CP trainings, and they should also understand how to identify and refer children using a trauma-informed approach. Next slide, please. Uh, a lot of cross-sector collaboration is uh, really needed to, to achieve uh, uh, to, to achieve peace expectation. So uh, the, 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 we are looking for an integration across the four models that uh, Paul has presented, the, the tutoring classes, the support to formal schools, and the safe, uh, safe, learn, safe healing and learning spaces. Uh, we are looking into increasing access to, to school for out of school children and uh, developing, uh, having in place safe and protect, uh, protection access to education for the different model. And uh, we think that we can increase community participation in promoting the integration between education and ch uh, child protection. Uh, we also do think that uh, we strengthen uh, teacher capacity, uh, both in education and child protection. And um, we give access to child protection services. We give access to children to, to child protection services. Uh, yes, next slide. Yeah, as I have already said, there is a need for collaboration between the two sectors to, to have in place an integrated program. So uh, for um, uh, to, to have in place an early warning system, we need really to coordinate between education and child protection teams because uh, we do not only implement early, early warning education system in the schools, but we implement in communities and in safe spaces also. So this requires a really tight collaboration between the two sectors. And uh, the social and emotional learnings 
I provided both through uh, education and child protection activities. And uh, we need to improve its staff competency and knowledge um, uh, to make uh, on, on collecting data on um, children disability to make our activities more inclusive. And then we need to train uh, and support school community structures for a really um, inform and uh, uh, to, so that they will be able to support both team and uh, for safe identification referral trainings. Uh, we need also to strengthen um, access to education and child protection services for out of school children uh, by implementing safe feeling and learning spaces and uh, for and um, for to have this uh, integration in some 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 areas as the far north of Cameroon uh, we need to develop integrated we need to have integrated literacy and numeracy uh, programs into Quranic schools and also uh, feedback mechanism in both of education and child protection services. Next slide. So uh, how do we integrate, uh, do we have in place integrated child protection and education uh, activities into formal schools? To do that, uh, we, we train uh, teachers on child safeguarding, child protection, and early warning systems. And uh, we hire um, and pilot child protection assistant for schools. So child protection staff that are dedicated for, uh, for, for education, uh, supporting uh, formal schools. And uh, we have an integrated uh, early warning system officer who is also dedicated to support uh, community and uh, education uh, schools to implement the early warning systems uh, plans. And uh, we have also uh, child protection care that support the schools. And uh, we train teachers on uh, healing classroom approaches. Okay, next slide. Maybe I can, sorry, Kunja, I don't mean to cut you off, but um, we'd love to hear a little bit about some of the lessons in the, the panel, if that's okay. Um, unless there's sort of a, a couple of things you wanna to say to wrap up and then I can move us into the panel segment as well. Okay, maybe what I can say as at the end is that uh, budget really do not, did not allow for uh, child protection service services to be extended in all the schools that we are we are working um, mm -hmm. so it is important uh, to remember that um, child protection intervention is a, a deep one and uh, it requires a lot of funding so to have in place a good integration between the two we need to uh, to to invest a lot on child protection activities, and so these require uh, more funding than the traditional uh, education system that we have in place. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Kunja. I think it, yeah, it's a really great example for showing how complex. Um, children's needs are in all the different areas where there can be interventions and that cross-cutting between education and child protection. Um, very much looking forward to, to hearing more about that in the panel. So I'm going to um, move us over to, to the, that segment and I'm very pleased to introduce Mike Karakosian. Um, who is my co-facilitator today. He is the Child Protection Specialist for World Vision in Lebanon, and he is going to kindly facilitate the panel. Over to you, Mike. Thank you so much, Amanda, and I'm really delighted to be here with everyone. It's a really lively discussion, and I'm, um, I'm really amazed by the great uh, success that uh, uh, our uh, very expert panelists today presented to us and to take it forward and unpack uh, the the findings uh, we will have I think around um, 
20 minutes more or less to discuss uh, in a Q&A session with our dear panelists. And I encourage uh, uh, everyone, the, our lovely participants as well, to include their questions in the chat and we will make sure to monitor that and ask our panelists uh, to answer those. So uh, not to uh, keep you waiting, uh, we will jump right into it. So following our discussion uh, uh, and the presentations that we had from uh, uh, all those uh, great examples uh, related to education and integration of child protection, uh, uh, I'm inviting, of course, uh, Ahlam, Sundos, uh, uh, Kunja, and Paul to unpack more and give us some insights, additional insights from their learning on the field. Uh, I will start with uh, the first question, which I will ask first to uh, Ahlam, uh, which is related to what was the main findings of the project. And uh, I would really uh, kindly ask our dear panelists to be brief in their answers so that everyone has a chance to answer. Thank you so much. Ahlam, over to you. Thank you, Meika. Okay. Um, uh, the key findings for the project uh, that uh, the integrating education with CB intervention will result to return back a great number of out of school children. The key result of this integrated project will help 14,000 uh, school age children to overcome the threats of war and conflict and be likely to go to back to school. Also, uh, 1,513 uh, of children, uh, of teachers, social workers, mentors, administrative staff, and PSS facilitators got a capacity building in the most important areas of CB and EIE, which contribute in facilitating the integration between education and child protection in future, and uh, increase the opportunity of out of school children to enroll in schools and get their right to education in a productive and safe environment. Thank you, Mike, over to you. Thank you, Ahlam, so much for your input. And, and uh, of course, the uh, uh, we cannot stress more how important for children to be included in school, especially uh, during this time uh, after the uh, COVID situation and uh, all the uh, ongoing uh, strife that is happening. I will move forward to Sundus to hear about uh, their uh, main finding of the project. Sundus, over to you. تمام مايك بالنسبة لنتائج التجربة اللي نحنا شاركناها معكم واللي كانت مطبقة على الأطفال ببرنامج أقرأ المطبق بالمخيمات هو واحد من برامج أجهز أهم النتائج اللي نحنا قدرنا نحصلها إنه نحنا قدرنا نرفع نسب الالتزام لهذول الأطفال اللي هن أصلاً كانوا محرومين من المدارس وكان كتير صعب علينا إنه نحنا نرجعن على التعليم من خلال نحنا هاي المتابعة اليومية والأسبوعية والشهري قدرنا نرفع نسب الالتزام لأكثر من خمسة وثمانين بالمية بالمخيمات كمان نحن قدرنا نخفف من نسبة الأطفال المعرضين للعماني من خلال أنه نحن طبقنا معهم تجربة تعليم من خلال تطبيقات الكترونية فقدرنا هيك أنه نحن نجذبهم أكثر للتعليم ونساعدهم ونحميهم من خطر العماني فهي كانت النتائج الرئيسية لمتابعتنا من خلال هاي المؤشرات التعليمية Lovely. Thank you so much, Sundus, for this input. Uh, uh, I will move forward with uh, Paul. Uh, can you let us uh, give us some insights from the one main finding in your project, in your setting? Thank you. Alan, can you say that again? Sorry, Paul. Do you want to repeat that, please? Sorry. Yeah. The question. Uh, so, uh, if you can share with us one main finding from the project in Nigeria, that would be really interesting. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, in terms of one main uh, finding, I would say that uh, one, this integration has created uh, has created an opportunity 
for a holistic uh, service provision and approach to children. So the children that we are supporting uh, receive education services, but also receive protection services. And uh, if this project was not integrated as it is, then children would be receiving one end of the services which would not be sufficient. And the circumstances that these children live in are very dire. So um, I, I like the fact that it is integrated and children can receive these uh, double uh, services. Yeah, we, we have seen that this changes their life uh, in, 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 in greater ways. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. That's in fact a very interesting finding and, and uh, I cannot stress enough how important it is for children to get uh, both education and child protection integrated together. Thank you for that. Uh, I would like to hear now uh, from the experience in Cameroon. Kunja, can you tell us more about one main finding from your project? Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Mike. Um, as uh, Paul has said, um, the integration requires um, engagement of uh, different um, Ministry of Education, like uh, here in Cameroon, we engage the Ministry of Social Affairs and the Ministry of Education, and uh, we work closely with them. So we are able to, to give access to children who are out of school to have access to education. And the ones who are about to drop from schools, we provide them uh, child protection uh, support so that they remain in, in school. So uh, it really um, make the system strong. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kunja. And uh, with that, I will move to my next question. And uh, that will be uh, to you as well, Kunja. Uh, which is, if you can tell us more about um, some lessons learned and the, the influence uh, of that on future projects. Uh, uh, the, the, we, yeah. I think the, one of the recommendations for a long term is that we should have um, uh, adaptive and flexible fundings, because uh, it's not easy to have an integrated project in a short time. So uh, here in Cameroon, we are lucky to have uh, this three-year funding with ECHO. And so uh, I think we need to advocate for, for more long-term uh, funding so that uh, we will be able to learn in the process and uh, bring, bring in innovative uh, activities to make it happen. Thank you so much for that, uh, Kunja. I, I will move to uh, Sarah. Sarah, uh, in the IRC project, uh, it's, it's based in three countries. And uh, uh, the panelists, of course, spoke to Cameroon and Nigeria. Any input you would like to um, add uh, from Niger, perhaps, or uh, lessons learned from there? Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, there are a few. So first of all, uh, my colleagues have already said this, but it's extremely important if you're responding in an emergency to recognize that it's not a six month or one year process, that children who are out of school or who, children who are at risk of dropout require longer term support in order to transition from one education model to the other and that the protection issues are complex. So they need that additional support. Uh, and that can only be done if you have a multi-year program where they can transition and receive the protection support as well through the education models. The second uh, lesson learned, or let's say innovations, is that across the three countries, each country innovated. And in uh, Niger, for example, they implemented a cash intervention that was preventing dropout and it integrated both uh, education considerations and protection considerations to target children at risk of dropout of school, formal school. And the second innovation that they did was targeting uh, children uh, with visual impairments in a school, uh, reinforcing the education uh, in the school with additional uh, competencies, and then also providing protection services in that same school. So. Um, and, and very quickly, just to say that Nigeria's innovation is working with praise singers 
to, to promote sensitization in the community on access to education and protection. And uh, Cameroon's uh, innovation is specifically on looking at integrated programming on out of school children. So those are great lessons learned as well for us to, to share at a later date. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sarah. The, the level of integration in all those three countries and the, the complexity of the work, I can only imagine how uh, uh, effort, all this effort you put. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, uh, I will uh, uh, remain with the same question to move uh, to um, uh, Ahlam. Ahlam, what are some lessons learned from, from the project in Yemen? Um, and the first uh, lesson is uh, supporting the inter integration of a child protection activities with educational activities because they are uh, complementary to each other and each one contributes to the success of the other as CB activities create an attractive and safe environment for children and support them psychologically. And this uh, appeared clearly as there were children who refused to enroll in education programs, but when they were informed and uh, notified that there were recreational activities, they changed their minds and joined education. And the other most important uh, uh, lesson is uh, to, uh, uh, to spread the awareness with the uh, uh, local authorities because they refuse such activities and they uh, we need to advocate more for child protection activities thanks mike over to me thank you so much ahlam for bringing uh, for for shedding light on the importance of uh, of addressing the psychological concerns for children uh, I will ask Sundos about the lessons learned with the monitoring system that, that they implemented in, uh, in the Abjad initiative in uh, northern Syria. So what are some lessons learned, Sundos, from, from your context? تمام اهم الدروس اللي احنا تعلمناها من خلال تطبيق هاي المؤشرات انه قديش مهم احنا نشتغل بطريقه منهجيه بالاعتماد على مؤشرات محدده قديش مهم احنا نتابع هدول الاطفال لنقدر نقدم لهم فعلا انشطه هادفه تربويه تقدر ترجعهم لنظام التعليم ومن خلال هذا التعليم اكيد نحميهم لهدول الاطفال قديش مهم هذا الارتباط بين التعليم والحمايه ويكون في هذا التشبيك الاستراتيجي دائما بين قطاع التعليم والحمايه لنقدر نقدم نموذج تعليم تعليمي تربوي هادف للاطفال خاصه الاطفال هذول اللي هن اصلا طالعين من ازمه وفي عندهم كثير مشاكل فكثير مهم يكون في هذا التشبيك والتعاون بين التعليم والحمايه ويكون العمل ممنهج ومحدد كمان لنقدر نوصل فعلا لنتائج شكرا لك سندوس um, I, I will remain with Sundos and uh, also this question in the chat is addressed to Sundos and Ahlam so uh, um, the question goes as such, the teachers participating in the family visits and follow up at home report any concerns in workload in addition to their teaching work and were the visits supported by caseworkers or only by teachers? Um, can you please repeat the question, Mike? Yes, so the question is, the teachers participating in the family visit follow up at home, report any concerns in workload, in addition to their teaching work, and were the visits supported by caseworkers or only teachers? هلا اكيد المعلمين معلمي الدعم اللي كانوا يقوموا بهي الزيارات اكيد كانوا يتحملوا اعضاء لكن نحن حاولنا ان نهيئ هاي البيئه ليقدروا يقوموا بهي الزيارات مع اخف التحديات يعني نحن قدرنا نعمل علاقات مع الاهالي بحيث انه الاهالي هني قادرين يستقبلونا خففنا شويه اعباء عن هذا المعلم هو كان مفرغ بشكل كامل بس لحتى يعمل هاي الزيارات وينفذ هاي الانشطه مع الاطفال فشوي حاولنا نخفف عن هذا العبء المساعدة من من عاملين اجتماعيين بشكل مباشر ما تلقينا مساعدة مباشرة لكن كان في مساعدات من خلال مثلا تدريبات من خلال هاي المحاولات للإحالات بيننا وبين الجهات الأخرى. Thank you so much, Sundus, for for your input, uh, and I'm going to ask the same question to Ahlam. Uh, Ahlam, do you need me to repeat the question? 
sorry, Mike, uh, do you mean uh, that uh, the teachers were the only one who uh, work in these activities? Yeah, the question basically uh, is asked in, in this way, is did the teachers participating in the home visits and follow up uh, report any concerns in their workload uh, uh, in addition to their teaching work? Or, uh, and were the visits supported by caseworkers or were they only as teachers doing the visits alone? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, the teachers, so psychosocial support uh, facilitators, the social workers, uh, also the community members, we, uh, we try to make or establish community committees and that helped us a lot in uh, the project. So all of the team were working uh, together, even ch uh, teachers, uh, community authorities, uh, administrative staff, social workers. We uh, were all working together and that facilitated the activities. Thank you so much, Ahlam. And with that, I'll move to my uh, next question to the IRC team. Uh, and I will leave the space for uh, whoever would like to answer this question. It's related to um, uh, the donors and, and the uh, influencing or convincing donors. So uh, uh, what does ECHO uh, or what did ECHO ask for evidence, basically uh, noting that uh, it's important to engage with donors and convince them of, of the project, you know? So what uh, type of evidence did ECHO ask for? Maybe I can take this question quickly. Um, and then if Kunjar Paul have something to add, uh, ECHO asked us for uh, integrated assessments, which the teams in the three countries worked on. But ECHO's main focus was that this was a learning opportunity and a pilot. So they've emphasized the importance of us being flexible with adapting our approaches and then learning from innovations, which is why in each country we're implementing and we're standardizing certain approaches, but there are some differences in innovation. And we've really focused on, as an organization, on collecting uh, learning throughout. So the teams have done assessments in formal schools, they're doing assessments with Quranic schools, uh, and all of that with an end game in the three years at the end of the project to have some more uh, lessons learned as to what worked and what didn't. And we also have some things that didn't work that we want to document well. And Kunja, Paul, I don't know if there's something else that you want to add. Yeah, just to emphasize uh, uh, what, uh, what Sarah said, across uh, learning. I, I echo would like to see uh, across the country learning uh, what Nigeria is learning from Cameroon and, and vice versa. Yeah, and how we are putting that learning into action and how it is, uh, you know, fitting into the context uh, of different uh, uh, countries. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah and Paul. Uh, uh, I, I would like to add another question, which was also shared in the chat, and it's about state actors and sustainability. And this is a question um, uh, for all the, our uh, dear panelists. So if you feel that you want to answer, just go right ahead and answer this question. And it's, uh, it, it is warming up to integration uh, and picking up from the, where the project ended, how does um, state government entities follow up and ensure sustainability and accountability for children. So I will repeat, yeah, go ahead, Paul, sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just to say that Kunja had actually mentioned this, Arya, uh, how we are carrying along uh, the state government, the state uh, government uh, uh, from the very start of, of program design, program implementation, program monitoring, and, uh, and reporting. So we carry them along and we build on community, but also government approved structures. So, and it is these structures that are owning up interventions. Uh, for example, early warning systems, they, they are built on community structures and community can, and will, will continue to monitor these uh, 
uh, uh, these uh, early warning signs, for example, safety plans, etc. Uh, so we are building on existing government structures and we are carrying government along and we hope by this sustainability will be strengthened. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul, for uh, uh, for your feedback on this one, and I'll, uh, I'll give the space for uh, another panelist to answer also for additional input on this question. Okay, uh, thanks, Mike. Maybe I will share, I will add a bit on what Paul has said. Uh, in Cameroon, we, we really uh, succeeded in uh, creating a platform where the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Social Affairs can meet together because uh, uh, they know that uh, they need each other to, to, to cover some needs, but uh, they didn't get this space. And at the beginning of the projects, we organize usually um, uh, workshops, accountability workshops for, uh, for, for both uh, entities to agree on the activities. Uh, so there are a lot of learnings, both for uh, government services and for uh, actors and uh, beneficiaries in the field. So um, uh, I think that's uh, really a success. And uh, I can also add that uh, we are able to adapt projects. So this is the advantage also of uh, having these uh, multi-country projects, we are able whenever there is need to, uh, to adapt and so that we will be able to increase the, the impact. And uh, we really engage the government services and uh, the close collaboration with them to implement the activities. Thanks. That's really great to hear Kunja also about how uh, uh, having close ties with, with the government entities uh, can ensure or contribute to ensuring the sustainability of activities is, is one important factor in, uh, in, in the initial impact of, of any project. So thank you for that. And with that, I will move to another question by Lean, uh, which is, although I, she says, although I fully agree with integration of child protection and education, there is often a key aspect missing to preventing violence against children at home and in school, improving livelihoods, alleviating poverty, curbing negative coping mechanisms. Do you agree with that? So I would like to hear from uh, Sundos on, on this point. Uh, do, do you agree that there are other factors also that influence and, and um, uh, make the situation dire for children other than violence against children in the household and in schools? Uh, من عشر سنين لهلا عندهم كثير تحديات موضوع العنف هو واحد من هاي التحديات موضوع التهجير التنقل عدم الشعور بالأمان هاي كلها تحديات لهذول الأطفال نحن عم نحاول كمان من خلال التعليم إنه نتعامل معه لأنه هي بتأثر بشكل مباشر على التعليم وبنفس الوقت بتأثر على هذول الأطفال اللي هن رح يكونوا أكيد هني مستقبل يعني هذا المجتمع فأكيد مو بس العنف التحديات كثيرة أمام هذول الأطفال مثل ما حكينا في عنا شعور يعني ما حاسين هني بالأمان أصلاً هني غير مستقرين بمكان واحد خلال فترة زمنية ممكن إنه يتنقلوا بأكثر من مكان خلال سنة واحدة ف... فأكيد العنف مو هو التحدي الوحيد ما بعرف إذا جاوبت على السؤال أو هذه النقطة اللي كانت تقصدها الأخت اللي سألت شكرا شكرا لك سندوس. Yes, you did answer uh, part of this um, question uh, about uh, what are other factors that influence also violence against children, whether inside or outside uh, the, the, the schools, but also um, uh, the part of the question which I will leave the floor for Ahlam also to answer is, uh, do you think it's important to also consider other sectors in, in uh, integrating, when integrating child protection to, uh, to answer to the other needs that contribute to um, negative coping mechanisms. 
Uh, sorry, Meg, uh, you mean uh, if it is necessary to integrate other sectors, not only ch uh, child protection, not only education? Yes, yes exactly. Yes. To, to address poverty, to, to uh, curb the negative coping mechanisms. So do you think it's important? Uh, do you agree with this? Yes, yes, Meg. For example, uh, in Yemen, I will give you an example in Yemen. Because of the war, uh, the the community, most of community are living in line of poor. For example, if you integrate also life uh, livelihood uh, sector, it is very important to support children to support families uh, that get a stable income, so they can send their children to a school where is the safe place for them, not to a labor work uh, or uh, something like that. And also wash, wash in schools sector, it is really important to protect children uh, because of the illnesses, because of the, uh, for example, COVID-19, cholera, and something like that. Um, CCCM and shelter, uh, all of the sectors are uh, complement each other. Um, I don't know if I uh, answered your question, Mike. Yes, you did. Thank you so much, Ahlam. Uh, moving to to one, I think uh, one of the last questions uh, for our dear panelists today. So, uh, do you think? Uh, or do you have any recommendations or ideas of CP interventions and tools in, in education integration that are less costly and thus more easily accessible to countries that do not have and do not invest in a lot of means? So I will repeat the question. Do you have any recommendations or ideas of child protection interventions and tools in education reintegration that are less costly and thus more easily accessible to countries that do not have or do not invest uh, in a lot of means. Mike, is the question to me or to all? It's for, for all the panelists, whoever is willing to answer, please go ahead and, and answer. Thank you. Okay, Mike, from my point of view, uh, advocacy, uh, is needed so donors can support these uh, activities. Uh, also, uh, to give uh, attention to uh, mental health, also, it is needed and very important. Um, uh, yes, that is the most important thing, and uh, distribute or uh, in, uh, spread uh, the package of uh, guidelines and the manuals more for example i um, i know about this alliance uh, through uh, facebook then linkedin so they need to spread more and uh, to reach people and community authorities and to know the how much uh, child protection is important and uh, make more advocacy with donors to support such activities that's it thank you Thank you so much, Ahlam. I, uh, I can take one more speaker for this question, and I think it would be fair enough to say that we can uh, have a last word for all our panelists today with a takeaway message that we would like to leave our participants with. So um, who would like to answer to this question? Uh, I, I would like to say something. Um, so uh, what I would say is that Sarah has already said it. In Nigeria, we have uh, tried uh, praise singers. You, these are uh, community-based uh, talented people who can sing and raise awareness on protection issues, but also on the importance of education and focus again on the uh, education for the most vulnerable, for that case, girls, children with disabilities, etc. And we have seen that it is speaking to the community because it creates a memory and then it, it generates reflection Ah, what was this person thinking about, singing about? Uh, wh why are they talking about education and education for the girl child? And then it generates, uh, uh, um, uh, what is it, um, reflection 
uh, conversation between communities. And then we have seen that there has been increase in number of communities sending their children to schools, uh, to learning centers. So that is an intervention that has worked and uh, could be adapted elsewhere. IRC also uses, uh, we have our child protection and safeguarding policy, which we sign with whoever uh, comes to intervene, to participate, uh, to collaborate with us. And this uh, is kind of, uh, you know, also is uh, an eye opener in terms of the, the, the responsibility of everybody to protection. And if you sign to, uh, to it, then you must leave it. So this is a, a policy that we would be happy to share uh, if others might not have uh, something like that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. And indeed, it is very important to find community initiatives and approaches that can strengthen and contribute to reintegration of children in, in schools. That's a very important point. Uh, I will move to Sundus. I see your hand is up, so please go ahead. Uh... شكرا مايك كنت انا بس حابه اضيف شغله اخيره عن موضوع انه التعليم التعليم خاصه بالبلدان اللي عم تعيش ازمات لحتى ينجح هذا التعليم المفروض يكون من المجتمع بنكون نحن كشباب نحن عم نساهم بخلق هذا النموذج المجتمعي اللي بيعتمد على الخبرات الموجوده والمهارات الموجوده بالمجتمع سواء من ناحيه الخبرات العلميه او المهنيه او حتى بموضوع الدعم مثل التجربه اللي عملناها نحن بابجد نحن كفريق ابجد نحن فعلا مبادره مجتمعيه ما في عندنا دعم مثلا من المنظمة المحددة لكن نعتمد على دعم السوريين للسوريين بهذا الموضوع ولذلك الحمد لله قدرنا نستمر من 2018 لليوم بهذه المشاريع التعليمية وما توقفنا فبس كانت الفكرة الأخيرة اللي حبيت ضيفها أنه نحن فعلا حابين نستمر بحماية وتعليم هذول الأطفال لازم يكون هذا التعليم نابع من المجتمع نفسه بمبادرات مجتمعية بجهود هذا المجتمع نفسه ومهاراته Shukran. Shukran, Alex um, so with that, I we have exactly 20 seconds for all our dear panelists for uh, having a very fast wrap up with a key message that we need to provide to our participants today. Uh, so what is that key message? And I will start with Sarah. Sarah, what is your key message for our audience today? Uh, my key message would be that we need to uh, adapt education and protection approaches for different cohorts of children. So integration will look different in a formal school where maybe you're strengthening uh, the existing system and training teachers and safeguarding and child protection and referring to case management where needed versus more costly but very critical interventions for the most vulnerable children who are out of school, who absolutely require targeted uh, work between child protection actors and education actors, and who will require more investment in terms of time and transition. So I would say that we should not exclude one because it is a, a more expensive intervention because they are at higher risk, but both have a value. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much, Sarah. That's a very important point indeed. Uh, with that, I move to Ahlam. Ahlam, what is your key takeaway message to our audience today? Thank you, Mike. Uh, advocating and encouraging the integration of child protection activities with education activities to create more impactful results as education is not complete without ensuring child protection and education is one of the most important rights of the child and its protection and ensuring a secure future for him. Thanks. Indeed, thank you so much, Ahlam, for your key takeaway message. And I move to Sundos. Sundos, what is your key takeaway message for our audience? بالنسبة لرسالتنا نحن حبينا كفريق أبجد نشارك اليوم معكم رغم أنه تجربتنا أصغر من الزملاء اللي موجودين لكن حبينا نفجر هذا النموذج من العمل وقديش هذا التعليم قديش قطاع التعليم مهم وقديش لازم يكون في هذا الترابط المستمر وبين التعليم والحمايه وقديش ممكن نحن نخفف كلفه التعليم عفوا كلفه اللي ممكن نحطها على الحمايه اذا دمجنا بين التعليم والحمايه ممكن نوصل لفعلا انشطه هادفه تفيد هذول الاطفال اللي هن 
كثير معرضين لكثير اشياء يعني بحاجه هني حمايه منا بهي الظروف اللي عم بيعيشوها خاصه بضمن الازمه Thank you so much, Sundus, for your key takeaway. And I give the floor to Kunja for your uh, key takeaway message to our audience today. Yes, uh, thank you, Mike. I think in a conflict-affected uh, setting, it is important to, to integrate the two sectors, education and child protection, because most of children, uh, most children don't go to school because of their vulnerability. And that's something we could not address uh, in an education, just with the education sector. So, uh, and also uh, most children leave schools because uh, uh, of their vulnerabilities also. So the, 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 the fact of having them integrated help us um, respond to their need, to needs that we cannot uh, support when we, we are just intervening in, in one angle. Yeah, so it is important, and for that we need to build the capacity of all the stakeholders, the uh, engage community, engage government services, and also build the capacity of the staffs of the project so that they will be able to 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 to, to come up with uh, um, ideas or or activities that can uh, that are relevant to the to the context. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Kunja, for your key takeaway message. Paul, uh, what key takeaway message would you like to deliver to our audience today? Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody who has shared the key takeaways. Uh, for me, I would like to say that uh, we all work in uh, difficult settings and we are working with children who are the most vulnerable and most marginalized and facing you know, severe challenges that anyone can imagine. So I would like to encourage all of uh, all of us uh, to that whatever intervention that we do, it makes a difference to that beneficiary that receives it. So I want to encourage all of you, uh, keep doing it, uh, keep uh, going an extra mile. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Paul. And uh, I believe with, with that, uh, last takeaway messages from our uh, expert panelists today uh, we come to a close to a closure to this uh, q a session which was very lively insightful i learned a lot from our expert panelists thank you so much for being here today and with that i am uh, also aware that uh, there are some questions that are uh, left unanswered unfortunately due to time and we will make sure to take those questions and uh, to uh, uh, submit them to our expert panelists for uh, later on to answer. Uh, thank you so much. And I give the floor back to Amanda. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Mike. And thanks to all our panelists. I think that was a, a super exciting discussion to start the day. Um, I'm buzzing with energy and, and want to be heading straight out to be implementing programs and talking with colleagues and, and being able to document these lessons learned for our advocacy work. Um, if you could just stay on the line, uh, David, one of our producers, is going to have a couple of announcements. Um, but thank you all for your participation, your engagement, to all the prep from our speakers and everyone working behind the scenes to make this happen today. Thank you. Over to you, David. Thank you very much, Amanda, and uh, many thanks to you and Mike and all the terrific speakers from today's panel. Um, I'm David. I've been one of your producers today. I'm just here to remind you to uh, go if you would. Well, first of all, to fill in a feedback form. I've just put it into the chat. We would very much appreciate it if you could share your thoughts on the session today. And also, please do uh, make your way back to the Philo uh, page. On the welcome page, you'll find a link to Wheelo, where you will be able to meet. Uh, it's a virtual coffee lounge. You'll be able to meet some of the speakers from various sessions and chat to uh, the other people attending the event. Um, and also, you will have the opportunity to take part in some of the infographic discussion sessions to find out more about what, what is being done in these very, very important areas. Thank you so much for attending and uh, we wish you a wonderful conference. Mm -hmm.